In this video, I'm going to give you a tip about cross-examination, which you might think won't be of any relevance to you because you'll never be cross-examining anybody. But if you bring a claim, for example, to the WRC, or perhaps the Residential Tenancies Board, or somewhere else where you may be tempted, wisely or otherwise, to represent yourself, then this simple tip in relation to cross-examination might be useful. I read a book there recently called Devil's Advocate. I'd strongly recommend it. And it's written by a Queen's Counsel from the UK. I think his name is Ian Larmor. Not 100%. Just can't remember the name off the top of my head. Very good book. Strongly recommend it. Devil's Advocate. In the book, though, he says, in relation to cross-examination, if you can avoid it, do. In other words, you do not cross-examine for the sake of cross-examining. You only cross-examine if it's in your interest. And cross-examination can go badly wrong because by definition you're going to be cross-examining or questioning somebody who is opposed to your version of events, who is supporting the other side because it's a cross-examination. This person is giving evidence for the other argument, the other side of the story that you're involved in. So the status quo should be, according to this Queen's Council, and I think he's right, is not to cross-examine unless you absolutely have to. Sometimes it's essential. But in this video, I'm watching a case there at the moment, a criminal prosecution against a former solicitor, Michael Lynn. Lynn was a solicitor stroke property developer who went uh, into difficulty, got into difficulty, and the whole thing crashed around his ears back when the Celtic Tiger situation uh, fell apart when the property crash hit Ireland but he got into difficulty and for years um, the Gardaí and the prosecution service here, the DPP, wanted to bring criminal prosecutions against him. They were unable to for one reason or another. Lynn went to the UK, he went to Portugal, he went to Brazil but eventually he's back and there's a criminal trial going on at the moment. He's being accused of theft of 27 million euros from various banks on foot of undertakings and on foot of borrowings for various properties. Essentially, the allegation is that he was, unlike ordinary solicitors or most solicitors, which is the common practice, obtaining a loan and securing it on one property, he was actually obtaining multiple loans secured on the one property. And the allegation is that he was involved in forging uh, undertakings or getting colleagues to forge undertakings, forging accounts and so on. These are allegations. The case is still going on. I'm not going to comment on it one way or the other in terms of the guilt or innocence of Mr. Lynn. He's entitled to the presumption of innocence until he's proven guilty. I think the case is nearly wrapping up now and we will probably have a verdict in early course. However, in the last few days, Mr. Lynn's wife, Breed, I think her name is, she's a former nurse, um, she gave evidence on behalf of Mr. Lynn's defence and Mr. Lynn's senior counsel took her through evidence but basically she wasn't involved in the business because she was a nurse, that was her profession but she could give evidence about meeting Mr. Lynn and living with him and having four wonderful children and so on and so forth and the difficulty that they had down through the years with various health issues and so forth that's not important, the important thing is that when the senior counsel for the state, for the prosecution, was given the opportunity to cross-examine uh, Mrs. Lynn. He declined. Patrick McGrath, senior counsel, declined to cross-examine her. And again, it just was a timely reminder for me of what I read in that book, The Devil's Advocate, by, I think, Ian Larmor, is your man's name, not 100%. I've written a blog post about the book, I'd recommend it. It's very good, actually. But... It was a reminder to me, Patrick McGrath, Senior Counsel's decision, not to cross-examine Michael Lynn's wife because he clearly didn't see any great benefit in doing so. And remember, every time he'd ask a question, he did not know what the answer was going to be. And the likelihood is the answer would not be helpful to him or his case to the prosecution because clearly she was a defence witness. But uh, it just goes to show you that you don't cross-examine every time you get the chance. You don't cross-examine for the sake of some self-indulgence or some attempt to put manners on somebody or to knock lumps off them. You cross-examine when it makes sense. 
and it doesn't always make sense. And the default position is don't cross-examine unless you have to. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I'd appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. And you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you are, just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks a lot.